very good morning today we are starting with the lecture number 6 for post graduation program in export import management today is is a lecture is all about the export import documentation in earlier lecture we have discussed about how to become an entrepreneur in terms of the export import business how can we start the export import house today what are the documents are requiring for any for any export import business so we have a numerous number of the document have more than 20 document which is actually compulsory for the uh, what we call export import business firstly firstly that is called commercial invoice commercial invoice and invoice is a fundamental documents of prime importance it contains the name of the exporter importer and the consignee and the description of the goods please note down this point it contains the name of the exporter importer the consignee and the description of the goods is a requisite for the invoice to be signed by an exporter or his agent normally the invoice is prepared first and several other documents are then prepared by the driving deriving information from the invoice the invoice the exporter is required to be present before different authorities for different purposes okay the commercial invoice is looks like this that the name is there exporter ultimate consignee intermediate consignee date order number commercial invoice number consignee phone number export exporting carrier point of origin po number purchase order that is called terms pro forma pro forma invoice number customer account number heading loading loading pier or terminal number ultimate designation here you can note down the per product code quantity product description harmonized code price and subtotal this is the looks like the commercial invoice invoice commercial invoice is just like invoice is a very fundamental documents of prime importance contains the name of the exporters importer and the consignee and the description of the goods it is requisite for the invoice to be signed by an exporter exporter will make it the commercial invoice or his agent normally the invoice is prepared first then several other documents are then prepared by the deriving information from the invoice all other documents which we are making in a later on stage all those documents all those documents we are preparing is because of the commercial invoice we are drawing those document from the commercial invoice the invoice of the exporter required to present it before different authorities for different that that is all about the commercial invoice got it next is the certificate of origin certificate of origin is a very useful document to the exporter and importer trade the certificate indicate that the goods which are being exported are actually manufactured in a specific country mentioned there the certificate is sent by the exporter to the importer it is useful for the clearance of the goods from the custom authority in the importing country however it is worth noting that certificate of origin is required by some countries normally the certificate of origin is issued by the local chamber of commerce the indian merchant chamber the indo arab chamber of commerce the local chamber of commerce at a different place like mumbai or some of the chambers regularly approached by the exporter for obtaining the certificate of origin In many cases, a statement of origin origin printed on the company letter hat will also suffice. Certificate of origin, which we are requiring for, suppose that, suppose that there are numerous number of the countries in the world where certificate of origin is requiring. Okay, certificate of origin, um, certificate of origin is basically for you, if you just want to know if you, the goods is goods are being exported, which uh, that goods is belongs to which country. So in the certificate of origin, it's already given there that this this goods belongs to India or Africa or China or what whatever the country is there. It is one of the very important useful documents for the export import trade. Okay. Normally, the certificate of origin is issued by the local chamber of commerce, but the Indian merchant chamber, the Indo Arab chamber of commerce, local chamber of commerce at different places like Delhi, Mumbai, and Mumbai or some of the chambers regularly approached by the exporter for obtaining certificate of origin. In a many, in a many, in a many, not in a numerous cases, a statement of origin printed on the company letterhead is also suffice. You suppose that certificate of origin is issued on the company letterhead, even though it will be valid. Okay. Then GSP, Generalized System of Preference Certificate of Origin. As its name indicates, Generalized System of Preference means certificate of origin certified that goods being exported have originated, been manufactured in a particular country. suppose that there is a goods good there, there is a goods where the name is written is made in india means the goods is manufactured in india it is mainly useful for taking advantage of preferential duty concessional if available 
as we know as we know there is a one concept in our regional economic integrate that is called preferential trade agreement suppose that your country have made certain agreement with the respective country where you just want to be export your products and services if you just want to be take the advantage of preferential trade agreement then you are requiring the certificate of origin okay then import from certain countries are favorably be treated in the matter, matter of levy of import duty custom authorities of the concerned importer countries insist upon some proof of the fact that goods are genuine product of such countries for this the gsp certificate is sent to the importer by the what is this certificate by sent by the exporter to the importer by, by you just want to get a certain exemptions for the duties or is matter of levy of the import duties where, where the certificate of origin is required products will be considered to have originated in india if they have been either wholly produced in india or produced there wholly or partially from imported materials they have undergone sufficient working or processing in india to be regarded as having originated there it won't matter if your product will be considered to be have originated in india if they have been either wholly product produced in india or produced there wholly or partially from imported materials if suppose that you have imported the product from across the globe and if and if you have manufactured those goods in india even though even though the product will be called that the product has manufactured in india the gsp certificate is normally issued by the government authorized agency some of which the director general of foreign trade and this regional office dgft and its regional office development commissions export promotion councils export inspection councils and its field offices called export inspection agencies textile committee mumbai and its field offices center sales board these are the six main agencies where the main government authorized agencies where the gsp certificate is normally issued got it first directorate general of foreign trade and its regional offices which is situated in our states development commissioners export promotion councils epcgs export inspection councils and its field offices called export inspection agencies Textile committees, whatever textile committees we have, Mumbai and its field offices and across the India, Central Sales Board. These are the six mainly authorized agencies. Yeah, GSP generalized system of preferential certificate of origin looks like this. Goods consigned from exporter business name, address, country. Goods consigned to consignee name means importer. ABC Limited address. What will be the address? Country. means of transport and routes what will be the if suppose that you are if you are transporting your goods by the sea so what will be the routes seaport a ship a ship ship will be the modes of transport and what will be the routes you have to be written down there issued in is qatar or india or pakistan or china or africa or europe for official use item number what whatever the item number you have you have put it down all the items number marks and the number of packages how many number how many packages you have number and kind of package a description of the goods you have to be write down the what are the goods is all about origin criteria see notes over this gross weight or other quantity how many quantities are gross weight number and date of the invoices got it then certificate is then declaration by the exporter ki the undersigned hereby declare that above details and statement are correct that all the goods were produced in a qatar or india whatever the countries if you are having then shipping bill or bill of entry shipping bill is a requisite for seeking the permission of custom to export goods by sea or air contain a description of export goods number and kind of packages shipping marks number value or name of the vessels the country of destination on the other hand importers have to submit a copy of the documents called bill of entry for customs later a copy has to be given to the bank for verification shipping bill is requisite for seeking the permissions whenever we just want to be take certain permissions from the custom department for exporting the goods whether it's by sea or air port by by ship by sea route or air air route contains a numerous number of the details like a description of the export goods numbers kind of packages shipping marks if any numbers value of the name value name of the vessels and country of the destination on the other hand importer have to be submit a copy of document is called bill of entry entry so bill of entry and shipping bill is same thing bill of entry for the customs later a copy has to be given to the bank for verification purposes got it next is the ari form even i told you the ari form during the export export uh, steps 
application of removal exercise have written down application of ARE form is an application for the removal of excise goods from the factor premises. Export purchase, for example, if you are exporting a ball point or magazine, if there is no excise applicable, you do need to fill in this form. The ARE form has multiple copies which are distributed to the different authorities including custom, range office of the excise, refund office of excise. Earlier this form was known as AR form, AR4 or AR4A. All those goods where the, where the there is no excise applicable where you just need to fill this form. You just want to be take the exemptions of the custom duties or excise duties. You need to fix, fill this particular form. Then exchange declaration form or GR form or SDF form. One of the main functions of central bank is to control and monitor the foreign exchange reserve of the country. Yes. Since export directly relate to the country's foreign exchange earning, it becomes essential for nations to regulate an export transaction. Government and the central bank of the country have full information about the export and import businesses. How many exports, how much exports you are doing from India, and how much products you are importing from across the globe. Central banks and government of India, they have full information about the export and import businesses. Because foreign exchange is directly depending on the surplus of the export, if the, if the export is more than the import, there will be a, there will be a surplus in a foreign exchange. If there is an import is more than the export, there will be a deficit in the foreign exchange. That is the thing government and the central bank of the country has to be uh, monitor all the export and import entry. The Reserve Bank of India has prescribed a GR form that is called SGF, a PP form, a software form to clear the export transaction. The GR form contain name and the address of the exporter and description of the good name and address of the exporter and description of the good. Second, name and address of the authorized dealer from whom proceed of the export have been or will be realized. Okay, we have to write down the name of the dealers or, or, or the mediator proceed of the export have been or will be realized. Details of the commission and discount due to the foreign agent or buyer. Whatever the discount or whatever the commission has been paid, there will be going to be paid, they have to be write down there. The full export value the full export value giving the breakup of the FBO free on gold, freight, insurance, discount and commission. We have to write each and everything. Then distribution disposable of copies of the GR form. GR form covering the export of goods should be completed by the exporters in duplicate and both the copies should be submitted to the custom at the time of the shipment. Okay. Please do remember this point. Ki GR form covering the export of the goods should be completed by the exporters completed by the export in duplicate and both the copies should be submitted to the custom at the time of the shipment. Second, second customers will verify all the particulars of all the goods and values will be declared in the GR form. Okay. So customs and will verify all the particulars of the, all the goods and the whatever the value will be there on the GRA form, custom will be verify those things. After the shipment has been sent, the original of the GR form will be retained by the customs or for onward submission to the Reserve Bank of India. Once the product will be shipped, after the shipment has been sent to the importer, the original of the GR form will be retained by the customs because custom department will be directly send that particular document to the Reserve Bank of India for monitoring and for all the information related with the export and import. Got it? A duplicate or copy of the GR form will be returned to the exporter through the consent clearing agent. Got it? Duplicate copy of the GR form will be returned to the exporter through the consent clearing agent. Whomsoever with the clearing agent, they will they will return the duplicate copy of the GR. An exporter is under obligation to submit duplicate copy A GR as soon as possible, but not later than 21 days from the ship, from the shipment with authorized dealer. Within the 21 days. From the 21 days, we have to be submit that particular GR copy. Then SG, uh, SGF statutory declaration form. Some offices in the custom department are now computerized. As we know, not, not some offices, most of the offices have been in a custom department become the computerized. To meet the requirement of the electronic data interchange, that is called EDI, in electronic data interchange system, GR form has been replaced online by new form known. 
statutory de declaration form SDF this is prepared in duplicate and submitted to the custom at the time of the shipment the SDF bears cross reference of the shipping bill number over a period it is estimated that the GR form will be completely replaced by the SDF right now as of now 99% 99% GR form has been replaced by the statutory declaration form that is called SDF that then next is a port parcel form when goods are exported by the post when goods are exported by the post then instead of the gr form the exporter has to fill up the post parcel pp form in, in triplicate not a duplicate in triplicate is the third copy this pp form needs to be signed in the original by the banker this pp form needs to be signed in the original by the banker banker has to be signed on this particular form therefore an exporter has to first submit this form to his banker for the necessary counter signature okay then what exporter has to done exporter has to firstly submit this form to his banker for the necessary counter signature the bank will return the original form to the exporter for submitting it to the post office along with the parcel got it once the counter signature will be done bankers will be submit the submit that form original form to the exporter for submitting it to the post office along with the parcel whatever the parcel we have the concern the concern post office shall forward the pp form pp form post parcel form to the office of the reserve bank of india after the goods have been dispatched from the post office a duplicate copy of the pp form will be kept by the authorized dealer to whom the exporter should submit relevant document for collection negotiation the time limit prescribed is 21 days within the 21 days we have to be complete all these formalities but that is all about the post parcel form post parcel form is basically for when the goods is exported by the post okay then soft text form the declaration in the form soft text in respect of the export of computer software in audio visual television software shall be submitted in a triplicate to the designated official of the department of electronics of government of india at the software technology park in india that is called stpi or the free trade zones fpz or export processing zones EPZ, eptz epz in india after certifying all three copies of soft text form the designated officer shall forward the original directly to the nearest office of the reserve bank return to his duplicate to the exporter the original copy we have to be submitted to the nearest office of the reserve bank of the soft text duplicate copy to the exporter the triplicate shall be retained by the designated official as a part of the record is the, we, we have to be maintain the record of all these things no? that is that is called we have to be maintain the triplicate copy got it next bill of exchange the bill of exchange is commonly known as a draft it is an instrument in writing bill of exchange is a commonly known as a draft it is an instrument in a writing containing an order signed by the maker directing a certain person sum of the money only to the order to a person to the bear of c of the instrument it is in the form of a demand the bill of exchange is negotiable in instrument as per section 5 of the negotiable in instrument act 1881 there are two types of bills of exchange side draft and affinity draft you got it bill of exchange the bill of exchange is just is, is just like a mode of the payment it's a commonly known as a draft it's an instrument writing containing an order signed by the maker directing a certain person certain sum of the money for certain time periods only to the order of a person to the bearer of the instrument it is in the form of a demand demand draft the bill of exchange is negotiable in instrument as we know as per section 5 there are two types of bill of exchange side draft and assent draft what is side draft when the drawer export when the drawer that is called exporter expect the drive imported to make the payment immediately upon the draft being presented to him then immediately when when the importers to make the payment immediately upon the draft being presented to him the draft involved is called side draft in this case when the importer has to make the payment immediately at the at, uh, as the draft is reaching to the importer that is called side draft in this case buyers cannot take delivery of the goods document without monitoring the payment so buyers that is called importer cannot uh, cannot take the delivery without making the payment the corresponding terms of payment is referred that is called delivery against payment because that is called normally cash on business now if suppose that you are you are one end you are receiving the product and in the other end you are making the payment other is the assent draft when the exporter has agreed to give credit to the foreign buyer sometimes when we are, sometimes we are giving the credit to the foreign buyer he draws the assents bill of exchange a draft may be drawn according to the period of credit that is called 30 days or 60 days 
after it, it is presented to the drive who will retire the documents by accepting the draft by writing a signature and the date on the due date on the due date importer will make the payment to the bank the bank will then forward the money to the exporter bank in case where the full payment is received in advance no bill of exchange is required to be drawn it's quite easy to understand suppose that bill if you have received the money payment in advance then no bills of exchange required to be drawn so since we are requiring when users want to be give certain credit to your uh, importer for 30 days or 60 days what the importer will do importer importer will make the payment to the their their own their own bank, country's bank then their importer bank will send the money to the exporter bank okay in case where the full payment is received in advance the no bill of exchange is required to be drawn so this is uh, looks like a bill of exchange for usd 39576 at sight of this first bill of exchange second of the same tanner and date being unpaid it to the order of bank for foreign trade of the vietnam hanoi branch the sum of united states dollar 39576 only value received as per the invoice this is this dated 4th of the february 2008 drawn under the wuri bank seal irrevocable dated wired the this is all about the bill of bills of exchange looks like this got it when I, with any any doubt you have now next inspection certificate the inspection certificate required by some importers and countries in order to get the specification of the goods shipped attested the attestation is usually performed by the government agency or by independent testing authority Inspection has to be required by some importers and countries in order to get the specification of the goods attested. So if the good, whatever the goods we are exporting from one country to other country, two countries are requiring the attested goods. Otherwise, they are not they are not accepting the orders. That is that is a, that is the only reason the attestation is usually performed by the government agencies because the, because countries are more relying on the government agency or by independent testing testing organization which is prescribed by the government. Next is a bill of lading. What do you mean by the bill of lading? Bill of lading is a document issued by the shipping company or its, its agent. Got it? it? It's acknowledge the receipt of the goods mentioned in the bill for the shipment of the board of the vessels. It is also an undertaking to deliver the goods on goods in the like order and condition is received to the consignee or its order, provided the freight and other charges specified in the bill of lading have been duly paid. Bill of lading is issued in the stand dined aligned document format for for adverse uh, there are two types of bill of lading state bill of lading which is non liable and non negotiable or super order bill of lading the letter can be bought sold or traded while the goods are in transit customer usually need an original negotiable as proof of the ownership to take the position of the goods what do you mean by the bill of lading it's a bill document issued by the shipping company or its agent it acknowledge the receipt of the goods mentioned in the bill Whatever the bill, whatever the goods, whatever the goods have been mentioned in the receipt, suppose that you have received the bill of lading, so that is called it is acknowledging the receipt of the goods mentioned in the bill, or shipment on the board of the vessel. It is also an undertaking to deliver the goods in the like order and condition as received. The consignee or its order provided the freight and other charges specified in the bill of lading have been duly paid. The bill of lading is generally made out in set of three originals. All originals are duly signed by the master of the ship or the agent of the shipping company and all the originals are equally valid for taking the delivery of the goods. Once any one original is utilized, the other original become null and void. All the original bill of lading should be bear the stamp duty. Got it? All the original bill of lading should be bear the stamp duty. Once you, once you, have, once you have used the one original utilized, once, once the one original bill of lading being the utilized, other original become the null, void, null and void. Utmost care is required to exercise to ensure that full set of original bill of lading obtained by the exporter, shipping company, no original copy passes into the wrong hand. Expo extra copies of bill of lading marked as a bond negotiable copy are also issued for the record. This copy cannot be utilized for taking the delivery of the because you have already made the non negotiable copy or you have made it void, null and void. The bill of lading is the legal document to be referred in case of any dispute over the shipment. It contains the following information. The shipping company name and address. You have to be write down the full name of the company and full address of your uh, branch. The consignee name and the address where users want to be send your products. 
the port of loading and port of discharge where you are loading a product and where the product is going to be uh, dis discharged shipping marks and particulars if any number of package how many packages you have number of packages shipped on board with the date rubber stamp description of the package with the goods you have to be write down the brief description of the package and the description of description about the goods gross weight and the net weight trade detail and name of the vessels nature of the shipping company agent so these are the eight nine ten point you have to be you have to be write down there and the it's a very it's, as we know below bleeding is a very legal document to be referred in case of any dispute so the and the, it contains the, these many informations uh, how the book how the bill of lading looks like this looks bill of lading it looks like this shipping bill for the export particularly beach bill exported detail consignee kalinga trading private limited river textile limited branch near kakajit post office new delhi south south chest road mobani durban south africa consignee that is called exported trading airport of loading icd port, port of discharge here write down gross weight net weight country of dest south africa con, number of containers number of nature of cargo mark forex bank account number rbi waiver number fob value this is this invoice detail invoice fobs insurance freight discount commission other deductions parking charge in nature buyers name so how the our bill of lading looks like this this is the sample copy we have one more copy and then custom edi system expo this is computer generated copy sp number prc print date consignment was not open for the physical examination by the custom exporters consignee item details quantity units item rate unit total value declared values scheme description cotton terry towel with the border embossed multi step this, this is brief description brief, brief description we have to be write write down about the product and service got it now next is the insurance certificate insurance certificate is is, is uh, used to assure the consignee that insurance can cover the losses or damage to the cargo during the transit marine or air insurance this can be obtained from the freight forward okay so we, we just because of the to covering the risk we have to be go for the covering to 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 get it the marine or air insurance for uh, covering the la losses or damages to that during the transit how the certificate of insurance looks like so, such insurance respect the interest of the certificate holder name below state from the state form mutual automobile insurance company name insured address of name insured policy number effective data policy description of vehicle liability coverage limit of the liability person each property damages property injury property damage single unit physical damage coverage so this is how the looks like the insurance of certificate of the insurance certificate of insurance plays a very vital role in terms of the covering the risk next is the pro forma invoice pro forma invoice as the name suggests is a pro forma of the invoice it's prepared by an exporter and sent to the importer for necessary acceptance it is just like a quotation which we are sending to the uh, buyer when the buyer is ready to purchase the goods he will request for a pro forma invoice pro forma invoice this document this, this document suggests to a buyer what the actual invoice out looks like he, if he were to place an order that the goods were to, to be supplied to him pro forma invoice in a pro forma invoice is just like original bill is just like a quotation whenever the, the buy, importer is agreed to buy any products and services then the exporters are directly sending the pro forma invoice to the buyers the buyers buyers have the full idea about the what are the prices what will be, what will be the prices and what will be the goods and uh, that pro forma invoice will be looks like the original invoice okay. second is the packing list packing list is a consolidated statement in a prescribed format dealing how the goods have been packed it is informative and itemize the material in each individual package such as drum box or cotton it is very useful documents for custom at the time of the examination and for the warehouses keeper the keeper of the buyers to maintain the record of the inventory and to effect delivery 
packing list will have many details common to those in an invoice. However, it doesn't indicate the unit rates and the value of the goods. Subject to the instruction of the buyers, a specific number of copies to the packing list are prepared. In the packing list, we are right. We are we are putting the see, how you have uh, how you have packed the individual package. It is in a drum or boxes or carton. We don't include the prices. We don't include the prices. We don't include the unit rate, and we don't include the value of the goods and services in the packing list. We we, try, we always try to make the number of copies of the packing list. How the packing list looks looks like? Date of the exportation, invoice number, export preference or sales order, shipper or exporter, consignee complete name and the full address of the importer, country of export USA. Here we have read, uh, write down written down country of manufacture, country of ultimate destination. Who are importer if other than the consignee? International airway bill. Then uh, quantity one, two, three, four, five, six. Description and the items. Okay, we don't write down your values and price. We we write down only packets. How many packets we have? Okay, that looks like the packing list. Then intimation for the inspection. Certificate of the inspection is issued by the export inspection agency under the export under the Export Act 1963. Goods should be exported only after the ensuring that they are of proper quality or not. The quality of goods are not satisfactory. It will be affect the image or not only the buyers but of the whole nation. So that is the thing that we have to be go for the inspection certificate. Because as per the Export Act 1963, it supposes that goods, is, goods, whatever the goods we are import, exporting from one country to the other country, should be the quality. It should be the as per the quality. If the goods, if the quality of goods are not satisfactory, will affect the image of the not only the buyers. As we know, effect, it will be affect the image of the whole nations. Shipping instruction: Goods may be exported to the foreign market by sea, air, post, and land. If suppose that we are sending the goods by shipping by the sea, obtain the permission of the port authority. That is your card ticket, oversight loading, jetty at port. We have to pay port commissioner charges, river duties, bollerum, fix toll, rent, lead ship order, freight receipt, bill of lading along with the freight receipt is submitted to the shipping bill of the calculating the freight charges. That is the that is the thing. That is the document we have to be complete whenever we are sending our goods by the sea. Shipping by air. Popular for products which are perishable and the seasonal, where the low volume, low low volume, high price, low volume, high value. So yeah, yeah. In case of the perishable items, we always try to send the goods by the air because the life cycle is very, 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 very less. Popular for the products which are perishable and seasonal. Advantage ensure the quicker delivery. Yes, payment receipt quicker. Involve lower packaging charges, less handling of goods in transit, risk of spillage, and the damage is reduced. Because as we know, ki if suppose that you are sending your goods from India to Dubai, within the three or within the four hours, you, your 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 goods will be reached out at the destination. That is the thing. And in in case of the air, you re, you receive the payment is very quickly. Shipping by post. Export of the goods by parcel post is regulated with the provision of the post notice number eight thirty seven nineteen seventy three. Parcel should be covered by proper export license. Otherwise, you will not be able to send the parcel. Filling of the parcel constitute for no claim for a compensation or refund of the account at the postage. Shipping by the land, the procedure of the export of the excisable goods by land is similar as for the export by the sea. AR form AR four form that is called ARE form one is used for applying for excise inspection of the at the factory. It is used when goods are to be exported under a claim for rebate of excise duty or under the bond. Next is the mail receipt. After the cargo is cleared from the custom examination and other formalities are over, the cargo is handed over to the shipping company for the loading. Please note down: mate receipt is issued by the captain of the ship. Who issued the mate receipt? Mate receipt is always issued by the captain of the ship. Contain the name of the vessels, shipping use, port of the loading, port of the discharge, shipping marks and numbers, packing detail, description of the goods, gross weight, container number, and seal number. The mate receipt is exchanged for the bill of lading. Mate receipt is exchanged for the. They might ask you question like this: "Ki what exchange in case of the bill of lading?" The mate receipt is exchanged for the bill of lading. Then airway bill. Airway bill is a contract between the owner of the goods and the carrier or its agent. There is a receipt issued by the uh, ARC Airlines or or any airlines company or its agent for carriage of goods is called airway bill. 
the first three digit of the airway bill number normally represent the code which identify the carrier just like a 125 british airways 074 klm royal dutch 176 emirate ashby that is for saudi airlines so that is the thing the first two digit or three digit reflect the uh, airlines code the airway bill should indicate the freight prepaid or freight to collect other charges related to the segment also mentioned on the airway bill the airway bill whenever we are exporting any goods by the air then we then airlines company has to prepare the airway bill got it last is the consular invoice the consular invoice is a document required by certain countries on not in a every country it is required the document but in a very in a, in a in a very few countries they are requiring the consular invoice is a document required by the certain countries this invoice is in a compound this invoice in a import important document which need to submit it for certification to the embassy the country concerned commercial invoice and sometimes is certificate of origin are required to be signed certified by the consular of the importing country located in the country of export the main purpose of consular invoice is enable the importer country to collect accurate and authenticated information about the value volume quantity and sources of the import for assessing the import duty and for other statistical purposes help the importer to get the goods cleared through the basic custom without any undue delay why we are making the con consular invoice because there are very few countries in the across the globe we are asking for the consular invoice so the main purpose of the consular invoice is enable importer importer countries to collect the accurate information about the product and services what will be the value of the product what will the what are the volume of the product what, what are the quantity what are the sources at the import for assessing the import, import duty because once the product will be reach out to the importer place they have to be take certain clearance if if you if you if if the importer has already received the consular invoice so easily they can assessing the import duties and for other statistical purpose help the importer to get goods cleared through the custom without any undue delay this is all about today's lecture so once again thank you so much for joining take care goodbye